Hello, hello. Welcome back to your favorite video series where we are taking major myths about abortion and breaking them down topic by topic so that we can debunk them. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of misinformation going around and I'm here to set the facts straight. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about what the Bible actually has to say about abortion. And this will apply to both practicing Jews and Christians. Um, and I also got permission from my mother to share with you guys her um, teen pregnancy story because it directly relates to the topic at hand. So stay tuned. And just so you know, I'm going to be breaking this video up into two parts. So the first part of this video, I'm going to be talking about God's original design for humanity and just the sacredness of mankind because a lot of people don't actually believe that human life is sacred. Um, and then, then in the next video, I'm going to talk about what how God actually views the act of abortion as well as what God thinks about parents ending the lives of their children. And we're also gonna be talking about mercy for those who have had abortions. Okay, without further ado, drum roll please. A recent study by the Cultural Research Center of Arizona Christian University shows a major shift in the American church. In January, 2020, the CRC surveyed 2,000 adults in the U.S. from four major groups. They surveyed evangelicals, Pentecostals, Charismatics, and mainline Protestants and Catholics. Um, and here's what they found out. 44% of evangelicals believe the Bible's teachings on abortion are ambiguous. Um, the study also showed that over half of the American Christians reject the belief that human life is sacred. What? Okay, so Let's just jump into the Bible. We're gonna do a deep dive off the cliff into scriptures right now. Does the Bible actually talk about human life being sacred? And what does God actually think about abortion? Let's begin. We have to go back to Genesis because we gotta look at God's original design for humanity to see what he actually had in mind when he created human beings. So I'm gonna pick up in Genesis one, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna pick up in Genesis nine verses one through seven. Bear with me, I'm going to read a chunk of text, and then we're going to break down what it means. So this takes place after the flood, um, when Noah and his immediate family were saved. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, all the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the fish of the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables. But you must never eat any meat that still has the lifeblood in it. And God continues, he says, and I will require the blood of anyone who takes another person's life. If a wild animal kills a person, it must die. And anyone who murders a fellow human must die. If anyone takes a human life, that person's life will also be taken by human hands. For God made human beings in his own image. Now be fruitful and multiply and repopulate the earth. Okay, so here's a couple points I want to break down to you um, before I tell you about my mom's story. First, humans are the only part of creation made in the image of God. Therefore, human life is sacred. God very clearly said that humans are made in the image of God and therefore he is going to avenge human life. Second, God has actually placed us above the animals. He said they are food for us, and he also said they will look on us in fear. We can kill animals to eat them, um, but if we take human life, God takes that very seriously because all humans are made in the image of God. Um, the third thing I want you to notice is that rather than destroying human life, we are called to create it. Not only did God say not to take human life, but he commanded the very opposite, create life. He specifically called, told us to be fruitful and multiply. God's first command, both to Adam and Eve in the garden and also to Noah and his family, was to be fruitful and multiply. Um, and then the last thing I want you to take away from this section of scripture is that God will avenge human life that has been destroyed because we were made in his image. The NIV version says, whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed, for in the image of God has God made mankind. Okay, so I just wanna ask you a very basic question. When an abortion happens, is blood shed? Is human blood shed? Scientifically speaking, I just wanna put it out there. When an abortion happens, is human blood shed? Some people might say no, but those people don't know their facts. Unfortunately, they would, they would be wrong. 
because in the most literal sense, there actually is bloodshed when a baby is aborted. Um, babies have their own blood cells developed at week five of pregnancy, um, and m moms and their babies actually have separate blood types. Their blood types don't mix. Baby has its own unique blood type. So when an abortion happens, blood is shed. Now back to the scripture, God is saying, whoever sheds human blood, by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. Now obviously this was long before Moses. This was long before Jesus came to the cross um, when he became sin and took our sins upon him. Um, so we are not living in this era where, where if, if a woman has an abortion, she is subject to die. That's, that's not how it works, although we will stand before God on judgment day one day, but we'll get to that later on in the video. For now, I just want you to understand that God actually takes it very seriously when we shed human blood. Um, so now that we understand how sacred life is and how valuable it is to God, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about my mom's story. I interviewed her recently and I asked if she would let me share some of this with you guys and she gave me permission. Um, so when she was in high school, when she was 17 years old, she was in a relationship with somebody and she ended up getting pregnant and obviously anyone who's in the position where they become pregnant and they weren't expecting to, you have some decisions to make. And so I just asked her about you know, how she made the decision to keep my oldest brother and how all that played out um, and she really valued life at the time, which I'm very grateful for, because my mom was actually born right around the time of Roe v. Roe v. Wade. So she grew up in an era where abortion was technically legal. Um, but thankfully, she valued life. She didn't want to consider an abortion. Um, but she did get counseling on adoption. And ultimately, she really just had a conviction that it was her responsibility to keep her baby, to raise the baby as her own. And so I'm really grateful that she chose to be courageous and do that because it's changed the course of my family. And um, you'll see some pictures that I'm going to be playing through this, but um, you'll see the picture of my mom with my oldest brother Christian and then Christian's life now today. Um, so my mom decided to keep my oldest brother Christian and um, the high school she went to strongly encouraged her to go to a school specifically for teen moms, so she ended up um, changing schools. So she gave birth to my brother and then went back to finish high school. Um, and I know that she had career aspirations at that time in her life. I think she wanted to be a pilot and she was training for some of those things. And ultimately, for that season of her life, she had to lay down some of her professional aspirations um, in order to raise children because her life very quickly became full of lots of kids. In fact, my mom has raised five children. Um, <laughs> but her sacrifice really paid off and it really has meant a lot to this family because she decided to keep my oldest brother Christian who is now in his early 30s. Um, that made a way for him to be able to be a blessing to this world as well. Uh, he's been in the Marines serving this country for 12 years and he is married with four children, three of whom are triplets. Pictures right there. Um, and I actually asked Christian what he thought about all this. And he was like, well, obviously, from my point of view, I'm pretty glad that mom kept me. So, you know, both, both my mom and my brother were very grateful that she decided to keep him. Um, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that that single decision to keep my brother led to so much more than my mom could have possibly known. And what my mom didn't know then when she made the sacrifice to lay down career stuff to raise children is that her career would actually come back around. And she's had several... Um, businesses that she's run and right now she is an administrator, a COO of a company and she's able to speak into many young people's lives and encourage other people who are lost and broken and, and I know she has changed the course of history for, for several and for many individuals and so it's cool that God helped her say yes to keeping my brother and she laid things down for a season but it ultimately came back around and so I just, I just wanted to let you know that if you are in the valley of decision and you're making a hard decision, do I keep the baby, do I not? Listen, God has a plan for that baby's life. God is going to lead you. He will never leave you or forsake you, just like he never left my mom and my family. And my family's been through plenty of hard times, but God has been faithful through it all. Um, and I asked my mom, is there a message that you would give to women who are considering an abortion and just don't know what to do? What would you say to those women? And she said, 
You know, abortion can do a lot of damage to somebody's soul, and it also takes the life of a child. She said, there are plenty of families in the world that would like to adopt. Adoption is a blessing to many people. And there's just too many options out there. Getting adoption paid for, choosing open or closed adoption, too many options to choose abortion. So my mom's words to my audience was just that if you are considering an abortion, um, consider that there are many other viable options for you. And if you need someone to talk to, please, by all means, reach out to me. So if you are a woman, at some point in your life, you're going to be making decisions about children in one form or fashion. The reality is God's original design for women was to be mothers. Genesis 3.20 said, Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Let's just talk about this for a biological perspective for a moment. From puberty until menopause, a woman's body prepares itself every single month to nurture the life of a child. However, when there is no child to nurture, a woman's body releases that tissue that it no longer needs, and that's called a menstrual cycle. Um, the woman literally has tissue. In fact, she has an entire organ that serves her, pot, her body zero purpose. The sole function of a uterus of the womb is to actually support the life of another individual. Um, and so when we circle back around to the my body, my choice argument, a lot of people think that every single part of our body is designed to serve us. And the reality is most of my organs are designed to serve me. However, as a female, there are certain organs in your body that are specifically designed to serve the life of another. A uterus is one of them. Breasts are one of them. And I'm not, I'm not trying to get too graphic here. I'm just painting the picture that God's design for a woman was to be a mother. From the very beginning, Eve, the first woman, was the mother of all living. And God specifically gave the commandment for us to be fruitful and multiply. Our design from God our Father in heaven is to birth children, to raise them up in the way of the Lord, to populate the earth. And so abortion is specifically targeting women. There's this lie that abortion is empowering women, but in reality, it's going against God's nature, the way he made us. He made us to create life, and abortion is teaching us to destroy life. So they are in direct conflict with each other. So if you are following the God of the Bible, if you really are a Christian, you have to understand that the way God made you is to create life, but it's also to protect life. Um, women are called to protect the vulnerable. We are called to love on the broken, the brokenhearted, the broken physically. We are called to nurture. And so the, the very nature of abortion is antithetical to nurturing. It is destroying life that is sacred in God's eyes. So I just, I want you to understand that as a woman, your role is to nurture humankind. Um, and I just really felt like God put it on my heart to share that with you. You are a mother, whether you have biological children or not, if you are a woman, you were created to nurture life. It's who you are. It's God's original design for you. You know, if an animal were to kill its own baby, we would probably question the well-being or health of the mama animal. But with humans, if they kill their own children, we praise them for doing what's best for themselves. And it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I, and I'm not trying to shame you. It doesn't make sense from a biological perspective, not even a spiritual perspective. If you just look at biology, for women to end the lives of their children in their own womb, there's a disconnect there. We have lost the instinct as women to nurture and give life, instead choosing to take the lives of our own children. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. Um, I, I saw this post going around social media, and, and it really struck me. It, it was saying something along the lines of, if we praise women for aborting their babies in the name of doing what's best for them, then we should also praise fathers for the leaving the home and neglecting their families because it's doing what's best for them. And so obviously that's kind of like a shocking statement. It's meant to agitate you, but it paints a picture. We are praising parents for neglecting their children, and that just shouldn't be so. It goes against God's very design for parents. 
You know, God's design for humanity was really smart, and his design for marriage and family was also really smart. God made a man and a woman to be joined together in a covenant lifelong relationship where they would feel safe and they would feel intimate and out of that offspring would come and the offspring would grow up in a family environment which which was protected and nurturing and this was such a brilliant design and the reality is with the breakdown of the nuclear family unit destruction happens all around i just want to read you this stat because it, it just paints the picture of what it means to go against God's wishes for family and children. Approximately 85% of abortions take place among unmarried women, compared to about 15% among married women. This shows that abortion rates go down drastically inside of a marriage, and we wonder why. But, but, But we know at the beginning, the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh so they know they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what god has joined together let no man separate see when the two become one they become a partnership and they become a safe haven for children to be born out of that and raised in a safe secure godly environment but when the two rip apart when they are not in a lifelong partnership there's no safety for the children there and we're left with single parent households all over the country so we have to understand that we must return back to god's original design for marriage in order to protect the family unit and in order to send abortion rates down because again 85 percent of abortions happen among unmarried women the last thing i want to touch on in this video is just how god sees children um, Psalms 127.3 says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Guys, God loves children, and he loves godly families having lots of children. And I've noticed a theme among the millennial generation that is just really disheartening, and it's a trend away from having children. I mean, Gosh, when I was in grad school, I I was in grad school with a lot of people in their late 20s, early 30s, and like one person in the class had a child, and everyone else, they had dogs. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be mean. Have have your dogs. But but the point is like none of them were even talking about having kids. None of them were even desiring that they just wanted their careers and they wanted their dogs and they wanted to have unrestrained sex and i'm not i'm not saying that as a knock on anyone i'm saying that's what i observed and it's just disheartening because children are a gift from god and i noticed even my mindset had started changing and i've had to bring my own mindset into check because it's just this idea that's going around in our culture that says children are a burden it requires too much self-sacrifice, that um, it, it's all about self-care, taking care of me, and that it's okay to abort a child if it means I can go to school, if it means I can have more financial stability, so on and so forth. There's a million seemingly valid reasons, but, but the reality is we have lost sight of self-sacrifice. And we are willing to abort children if it improves our lives because children, in our in our twisted way of thinking children don't give us anything but rather they require a lot of us and that's not even entirely true because children actually do bring a lot of joy they're god's design but we've lost sight of that and so i just want to encourage you especially if you're a young person and you just feel like yeah i just want to do my own thing i don't really want to have have a family listen i've had to battle those same thoughts but but we have to choose to think differently and say no that's the world's way of doing things. And honestly, that has the devil's narrative written all over it because the devil wants to destroy God's creation. He hates mankind because we remind him of our maker God, because we are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of, of the one the devil hates most. And so he's going to do anything he can to destroy humanity. And one of the ways he does that is by seeping into our mindsets and making us think that we don't want kids. We don't need kids. No, I've been hurt by my parents. I've been hurt by, you know, whatever generation. And so in my life, I'm just going to take care of me, myself, and I, and I'm going to have fun. And say la vie. No, that's not how it works. 
Fulfillment in life actually comes from laying your life down. (laughs) And joy is found in serving others. You will come up empty when you make your life about serving yourself, but you will find life when you lay your life down for others. And I'm telling you, I have I have experienced way more joy in the service of others than I ever did trying to serve myself. Um, and so on that note, I'm going to pause the video. We're going to pick up in the next video, and we're going to actually talk really deep about scriptures that that talk about what God actually thinks about parents aborting their children and, and ending their children's lives. But for now, I just want you to know um, that God loves children, that God loves you, and if you are a woman you were made in the image of God to mother. And if you are a man, you were made in the image of God to father. God has made us to be mothers and fathers and to populate the earth and to care for those who cannot care for themselves. And so that is my challenge to you. Don't make this life just about you. Make it about others and you will find the fulfillment you're longing for. All right, if you liked this video, I ask you to like and subscribe. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Say hi in the comment section. And don't forget to tune in to part two, which I'm probably going to be posting next week, but I'm going to film it right now. Okay, have a good day, guys. Love you.